Periscope, what's up? Greg Howes, it is Friday morning. The week is coming to a close. We're heading into the weekend. It's exciting. Good morning, good morning, good morning. God bless you so much. Dunn, North Carolina, good morning. Hi, you guys. How you doing? Mildred, good morning, good morning. Mildred Bowers, good morning. Pakistan, Pastor Yasmin, she contacted me on Facebook recently. Good morning, or good afternoon over in Pakistan. Yeah, good afternoon. Good morning, good morning. Got the coffee going. Come on. High energy. Got the coffee going. Breakfast going. Boston is here. Maryland. Kansas City, Missouri. Home of the Royals. All right. Vincennes, Indiana. The coffee is flowing. Okay, Pittsburgh. California. Washington is here. West Coast. Come on. Waldorf, Maryland. Fort Worth, Texas. Southern Cal is here. All right. Maryville. East Chicago, Indiana. Baltimore. Orioles, are they still in first place? All right, Tullahoma, Tennessee. All right, good morning, guys. Good morning. I feel the coffee flowing this morning. I feel some caffeine rush. Come on, New York City. The NYC is in the house. Hello, hello, hello. Thank you for the hearts. Every time you tap the screen, you release hearts. Go, Cubbies. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cubbies are going. The White Sox are going good. Yeah, yeah. How about them O's? Are they still in first place? Orioles still number one in the East. Good morning, Hampton, Virginia. Good morning. Good morning, Brooklyn. Oh, we're fasting. Okay, no coffee because we're fasting. All right, we'll respect that. I'm very ugly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for the compliment. So are you. Okay. Chicago is here. High energy. High energy. God bless you guys. God bless you. Put that. Put the block in effect. Put the block in effect. Pakistan via Skype. All right, all right. Um, we can speak via Skype. All right, all right. We'll figure it out. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Thank you for the hearts. L.A., California. Come to L.A. That's my hometown. That's my hometown. You know Torrance, Palos Verdes, South, uh, the South Bay area, Redondo Beach, Manhattan Beach, Hermosa Beach. That's where I'm from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. El Camino, J.C., UCLA. I know I got a Trojan on here somewhere. We're looking for the Bruins. Come on, Bruins. Rise up. Rise up. Thank you for the hearts. Thank you so much. Thanks for inviting people. There it is. There it is right there. USC. <laughs> USC is here. You're in the harbor area. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm very familiar. Very familiar. Down there by San Pedro. Down in that area. Okay. Excellent. 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 Good stuff. Good stuff. Very good. Good to have you on the broadcast today. This is Leader Scope. And I'm so glad you joined me this morning on this Friday. We're heading into the weekend. We're excited about what God is doing. Absolutely we are. And uh, we're going to be looking forward to the good things that he has for us this weekend. And I, I want to encourage you to get into your local church this weekend, whether they meet on Saturday or on Sunday. Get into your local church. Be a part. Be engaged. Be active in what God is doing in your local church. Receive the word from your, your pastor, from your senior leader. Get the word into your heart. Fellowship with the saints. Enjoy it. Worship. Enter into the prophetic. It's going to be powerful. I know this Sunday at Cornerstone, we have our prophetic teams that are ready to go. They're going to be in action this Sunday. So anybody that is looking for a prophetic word, they can receive one this Sunday at Cornerstone. So we're ready to go with that. If you happen to be in the area, you're very welcome. We meet at 8 a.m. for our early service and then 1030 a.m. for our second worship service every Sunday. 2919 Chicago Road in South Chicago Heights, Illinois. Great to have you with me on Leaderscope today. This is Faint Not Friday. Faint Not Friday. And on Faint Not Friday, we deal with this aspect of becoming weary and then fainting. And we've been looking at Isaiah chapter 40, starting at verse 28, where the scripture says, Have you not known? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, neither faints nor is weary. Come on, that's good news. Your God does not grow weary, and he does not faint. 
It goes on to say, he is, uh, his understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the weak and to those who have no might, he increases strength. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. The young men shall utterly fall. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so we have come to understand that there is a process moving toward weariness. And once a believer becomes weary, then it's very easy to move to the next step, which is to faint. And once you faint, you become unconscious of what is going on around you. You become unaware of what God wants to do, and you become unaware of the activities of the enemy working in your life. Now, Galatians chapter 6 and verse 9 says, Let us not be weary in well-doing. Let us not be weary in well-doing. So let me ask you a question. What is well-doing? What is well-doing? Come on, type in some answers and send them up on the screen, okay? What is well-doing? Galatians 6, 9 says, don't be weary in well-doing. For in due season we shall reap if we faint not. If we faint not. Somebody says it is God's will. So well-doing is doing the will of God. Somebody else says it's doing good things. Ministry, giving to others, doing the will of God, not fainting, not fainting. Well, not fainting as a result of that. What God has assigned, God's will, God's works, the will of God, trusting God's process. I like that. What is well doing is trusting God's process. Very good. Doing his will, working for his purpose, keeping your focus, following God's plan, uh, just life in general, trusting God, living in the word, living the word out in your life, carrying out his predestined plan, spending time with the Lord, good and charitable works, chasing after God, doing what God has called you to do, living righteously and in faith, building the kingdom, doing what's right. Wow, those are some great ideas, great feedback. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Waiting on the Lord. So all of that that you were just saying represents some aspect of well-doing. And Galatians 6, 9 says, don't be weary in well-doing. Don't be weary in well-doing. I think I like the aspect of doing the will of the Father. If you're doing the will of the Father, then you are doing well. It is well-doing. It's well-doing. And so when we see the Father, we'll hear him say, well done. Well done, good and faithful servant. Good and faithful servant. And so the process of spiritual development and maturity is to move from sinner to becoming a saint to realizing you are a son in the house of God. And because you are a son, you will now serve your father. But you don't serve him as a slave. You serve him as a son in his house, which is a whole different aspect of, of relating to God. You relate to him as your father and you serve him as a son loving a father and a father loving a son. Powerful. All of that is involved in well-doing. So Galatians 6, 9 says, don't be weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. So it's agricultural language. We've been planting seed with our well-doing. We're not going to grow tired. We're not going to grow weary because we realize we are going to reap in due season. Due season is God's season. It's not your timetable. It's God's timetable. And when he says it's the right season, you're going to reap. So don't faint before you get there. Don't faint before you get there. Now, today I want us to talk about a specific uh, aspect of growing weary and fainting, and that is discouragement. So often we become discouraged in the Christian walk, we become discouraged in our ministry efforts, and that discouragement can easily lead us to a place of fainting. In 1 Kings chapter 19, after Elijah has been wiping out the prophets of Baal. He's been showing the people of God that God is the true and living God. I mean, this dude called fire down out of heaven. He, he's been powerful in his ministry. And 1 Kings 19 begins to shift the whole scene. It says, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. Also, how he had executed all the prophets with the sword, the prophets of Baal. 
Then Jezebel sent a message to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. So we have Jezebel now threatening the prophetic voice in the land. And that's what the Jezebel spirit does. The Jezebel spirit always attempts to shut down the prophetic voice. And here we see Jezebel now rising against Elijah because of his prophetic advancement and his prophetic elevation. Jezebel now rises against him to stop him, to shut him down. And she releases a word of threat, a word of accusation against his life. She speaks a word about him. She's going to kill him. She's going to wipe him off the face of the planet. It's a word that she releases, something she said. But verse 3 then says, And when Elijah saw that, when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life. Ran for his life. Notice that Jezebel threatened him with a word, but Elijah saw it. He saw it. You know, so many times in life we can receive a word, and the word is descriptive about something that's going to happen to us. Somebody may be uh, threatening us, somebody may be accusing us, somebody may even be cursing us with their words. And it takes on a visual aspect where we can actually see See something happening because they said it. All it is is a word. All it is is verbal communication. And yet we can visualize it. We can see it. And once we see it, we begin to feel it. Once we see it, we begin to sense the fear that is connected with it. That's what happened to Elijah. He received a word of threatening from Jezebel and then he saw it. He saw it as if it was happening. He saw himself being slaughtered by the hands of Jezebel, and he ran for his life. He ran for his life because discouragement had set in. Discouragement is that which causes us to lose confidence, or we lose our sense of enthusiasm. And remember, enthusiasm means God is in me, God within so when we lose our sense of having God living within us, uh, we're, we're headed for deep discouragement. Discouragement means that something is making you less hopeful and you become less determined and less confident about what you are attempting to accomplish. If you are discouraged, it means you are alarmed, you are demoralized, you are dismayed, and you are intimidated. Discouragement happens when something takes action to suck the courage out of our lives. That is discouragement. Something is sucking. Something is pulling the courage out of you. We easily become discouraged with circumstances. We quickly become discouraged with people. Even with our own close family members, we become discouraged with husbands and wives, with children, with brothers and sisters. We become discouraged with people, church people, church leaders. We become discouraged. We can even become discouraged with God. Did you realize that? We can become discouraged with God. We can become discouraged with ourselves, with ourselves. But encouragement happens when courage is poured back into our hearts, when courage is poured back into us. And I have found the very best way to encourage someone is to speak words to them. The power of your words. Life is in the power of the tongue. So speak life to people that you sense discouragement in. And when you are discouraged, you need somebody to speak life, to speak encouragement to you. And as you receive those encouraging words, courage is being poured back into your heart. Listen to these words from the Bible concerning encouragement, displacing discouragement. Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation. Be constant in in prayer. That's powerful. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. We are afflicted in every way, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but we are not driven to despair. We are persecuted, 
but we are not forsaken. We are struck down, but we are not destroyed. Oh, come on. High energy Friday. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, that's encouraging. Psalm 94, verse 14. For the Lord will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his heritage. Hallelujah. God has never forsaken you and he's not going to start today. He is with you, so be encouraged. Now here's how you deal with discouragement. Five things about dealing with discouragement. Number one, be honest. Admit that you're having some negative emotions. Admit that something toxic is going on in your heart. Number two, take care of your physical body. Because if your body is weary and tired and broken, it's going to affect your mind, it's going to affect your emotions, it's going to affect the decisions, the choices that you are making. It's interesting in Elijah's case that the very first thing that God tended to in Elijah's life was his physical well-being. He sent angels to bring food to Elijah so Elijah could eat something, and Elijah went 40 days on the strength of that food that he ate. God helped him take care of his body. Number three, give attention to your thought life. Give attention to your thought life. Watch your self-talk. Watch what you're saying to yourself. Watch what you're saying about yourself. Don't be calling yourself stupid. Don't be calling yourself a failure. Don't be calling yourself ugly. Don't receive those words into your life. I have found if I change my thought pattern, my emotions will follow. And I want to encourage you with that today. If you will change your thought pattern, if you start thinking a different way about yourself, about your circumstances, I'm telling you, your emotions will change as well. Number four, train yourself to see out of two lenses at the same time. It's going to be natural for you to see the temporal, the temporal, the temporal, things of this earth life. You're going to see those things. That's natural. And as you see the temporal, you're going to see it with a focus on the promises of God. But then the second lens is to see the eternal. And when you see the eternal spiritual realm, you're doing it with a focus on the unchanging purpose of God. So we have the promises of God and we have the purpose of God that are going to carry us through. Finally, number five, press in close to God. That's how you overcome discouragement. Press in close to God. Realize the power of Nahum chapter 1 and verse 7. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble. He knows those who trust him. So when you trust God and you believe that he's good, the Lord knows who you are and he'll become a stronghold in your life. A good stronghold, a powerful stronghold by which you can live in victory. So you must learn to displace those negative toxic emotions with another action. And that action is to press in to the presence of God. Exercise gratitude in your life. Exercise thanksgiving in your life. Be thankful in the midst of trouble. And if you will do these things, I'm telling you, you can rise up and you can overcome depression. You can overcome discouragement. You can overcome the downers of life. You don't have to grow weary. You don't have to faint. So today, be encouraged in the presence of God. Be encouraged by his word, by his promises, by his purpose in your life. He is with you. He's a mighty, powerful stronghold of hope in your heart. So live with him today. Overcome discouragement. You're not being weary today, and you're not going to faint. God bless you so much. I love you. Thanks for being on, the, on Leaderscope with me today. I appreciate it. Go into this weekend with victory in your heart and life. Opportunities are coming. Open doors are, are, are just popping up in front of you left and right. God is doing a great thing. Get into your local church this Sunday and enjoy the good things of God. Have a great day today. God bless you. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might.
Come on, no turning back. No turning back today. No turning back. Once you put your hands on the plow, you're not going to turn back. The Lord is with me. Hallelujah. I'm going to follow after Him. I am His disciple. Not going back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Following Jesus. Following after Him. Not turning back. No weariness. No fainting. Come on. You make all things brand new. Hallelujah. You make all things brand new.